welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alexandra, and I wanted to share with you a few of my current um, books on art that I have been using since the beginning of the summer. Um, this summer was a little different for me. It was the first summer, basically, that I was a um, mom without any children in my care day to day. Uh, my youngest has gone off to college and she spent the summer in a co-op placement that kept her at the college in the city where she's living at the moment. So I was um, all by myself and uh, it was the first time in the very, very long time that that happened and it really opened the opportunity to have a lot of free time besides working and to discover maybe my what could be interest uh, of interest to me um, starting at uh, this time in my life. So art is definitely something that's always been of interest to me, but um, I didn't really explore it that much while my kids were growing up besides doing it along with them. Um, once upon a time, I homeschooled them before COVID happened. <laughs> and uh, I used to definitely draw with them, paint with them, color. And um, we did like nature study that involved drawing sometimes what we found. We also did art appreciation and learn a lot about different art styles and, and artists. Um, but I didn't really dive deep for myself. Didn't really have the time, honestly. So I thought this summer I would take that opportunity of all this time to, again, learn by myself. Um, I definitely created some studies for my kids, um, knew how to pull um, our own curriculum together. And so I kind of um, went back and looked at, at what worked and um, created my own very, very loose curriculum for learning about history of art and as soon as I started learning about art history I also noticed that I was really itching to actually do art myself so I will probably do a different video um, to explain what I have been doing because for this time this video will be about art history so first I did use a very small notebook to um, this is like a bullet journal notebook that I use for bringing down my ideas. And um, I did include some notes about art history self-learning. Um, it's a very, very kind of overview about different resources that I could find. And I can go in more details about these if there's interest, but this was basically just for me when I first started the idea of looking for um, maybe some apps or podcast or YouTube channels. Um, Google Arts and Culture website is a really good resource. And then different type of, again, YouTube channels to do it. And then when I started researching for some art history books, I wrote the, um, the ones that caught my eye and I looked at for them at the library or in thrift stores or just simply on um, Indigo, which is in Canada here or um, Amazon. Um, and then I try to keep a track a little bit of the videos I watch in the podcast episodes that I listen to, but then I stopped because it was just too much. Um, so the study ideas plan is to take notes while reading as I want. I mean, I'm not doing this for, um, you know, exam scores or anything like that. So just for my own personal enjoyment. Um, notes on art period styles with dates and timelines. I haven't done an actual timeline yet, but I could at some point. And then um, give myself a little bit of an assigned reading. So I did start with the story of art and the secret lives of color. Um, and then my aim was to read a chapter each week. So that was basically my plan. And then, yeah, I did want to keep a keep a list of works of art that kept my eye, caught my eye, and uh, I haven't really done that much either. But I did stay with the notes. Um, I did take um, some notes on the secret lives of color and the story of the art. So my notes are very simple. They're just whatever is kind of interest to me or um, that I want to remember, I put it in there. 
as I'm reading. So the two books that I mention are The Secret Lives of Color and The Story of Art. Um, I will do this one first. So The Story of Art, and I really don't know how to pronounce his last name, Gumbrich or Gumbrick. Um, it is one of the titles that kept coming up when I was doing research on which book was interesting to learn the art history, but not, um, you know, textbook, old style, boring type. <laughs> so this one kept coming up and being uh, recommended. And so I, I looked at it a little bit more and then decided to go ahead and um, get it. It was not at my local library and it's obviously quite a thick, thick book. So I knew I had to purchase it. I am not disappointed. This is so good. I actually love reading from it. It is in a very accessible style. It's very interesting. Um, it, it talks a lot about all kinds of different styles of art. So not just painting, but architecture, um, sculpture, and goes um, through all chronologically uh, and explains very well the different art periods and art styles and how uh, the artists came to the, um, the art styles and what they learned. And yeah, it's been really, really very interesting. And then the other one that I have been using is from the library. Um, it's The Secret Lives of Color. And this one has no pictures um, at all, uh, which is kind of interesting, but I've Googled a lot of the works mentioned. It is, it is um, fascinating um, to go through all the different colors. And it basically tells you the history of how they came to discover the color. And each one is, is wildly different. And she also mentions uh, more modern connections with those colors. Uh, so again, very, very interesting to me. It's great. Um, I've been trying to find the hardcover version of this book. Um, it is now in paperback, but I, I really love the, the cover of this one. So I will keep looking for a used copy um, and take my time. But I'm almost done this one and it is due back at the library. So excellent uh, very enjoyable book, even if you're not really into art history, it's more um, just interesting facts. So these two, as I mentioned, are the ones that I'm consistently reading every day, pretty much, um, through my, my study of art history. And then I brought in a few others because I do use them quite a bit. Um, this little one I actually found at the local thrift store. If you're in Canada, I found it at Valley Village. Um, Valley Village is actually a great spot for um, finding some art books. It's um, They're usually around you know, $5.99 to $6.99 or less. And a lot of people just, I guess, are done when they're done with their kind of coffee style, coffee book style um, books, just, you know, get rid of them. And um, that's great for, for me. So this one is called um, Art, A World History. And yes, it was $5.99. And it's very similar to the story of art, but I really like the format. It's a little bit quicker read. But what I've been doing is I go through, for example, one of the artists that I read in this book in the story of the art and sometimes the, the photos are um, more vibrant in this book or sometimes they're in black and white in here so I come in here and happen to find the exact same um, piece like the painting that is discussed in this one and it just gives a little bit more information um, so I tend to have this one um, that I can I, I just go and search for a relevant piece um, it goes through a lot of different time periods, again, same in an artist. So very, very cute little one. And for $5.99, it was a great find. Um, the Artist's Way will be more talked about in my next video with connecting the study of history of art with actually doing art myself. But The Artist's Way, I've been reading this for years, actually, and, uh, it is, it's, it's a very influential um, book that I just kind of go a little chapter here and there um, as time goes by. So definitely 
uh, recommend it. It does talk a lot about uh, spiritual um, side of it, but it's easily to kind of bypass that as well. Um, it didn't turn me off from this book. So um, I find the, the keynotes are that um, doing the morning pages is very good and also going on artist dates has been it's been very great so i will try to talk more about this in the next video um one of the the parts of studying art that i wanted to do once i um got through the story of art and kind of like know all the basics is to dive deep into particular artists and when i came across this book magritte um I knew I had to get it because this is one of my favorite, favorite artists when I was growing up. So I thought I would uh, revisit and learn more about this artist. And so I haven't read this one yet, but it's on, it's on my next uh, little pile. When I was in France last year, I actually um, picked up uh, this uh, book there. And so it is en français. Um, which is my first language, so this is not an issue for me to read <laughs> and enjoy. And it is fabulous. It has a hundred different paintings and from different artists of the Impressionist time period. And I'm trying to see if there's a table of contents, but I don't think there is. Still have my receipt from the Galerie de Fayette <laughs> in here. Um, but the, the images are beautifully done. Um, I love when they're like big double page spread like this. You can really see more details and there are a little bit of text to read about the image and the artist. Um, so I, I look at this all the time. I just open it randomly and, and read and I've read the whole thing already. I love that time period. And then very recently, um, like just a couple of days ago, I received my copy of this um, Disney Pixar Elemental, like the art of. And so I haven't even really opened it a lot, but I absolutely love the animation um, style of, of art as well as like impressionists. Um, so, and when I watched the movie Elemental on Disney Plus, uh, last week, I fell in love with the, all the art from it, all the backgrounds, um, like the city and the characters. And I, yeah, so I knew I wanted to um, kind of learn more about and see the concept art from it. It's just so cool. I love the details. Like the saltwater fish market. It's, it's great. Um, if you have seen the movie too, I, uh, in the credits, there's a lot of different little art, um, little things, uh, that roll through the credits that are really, really cool. So anyway, um, I thought I would include that just because it's, um, you know, I have like all different really favorite styles. It's, um, it's nice to find out a mixture. I'm sorry, the video is shaking from the tripod. It's uh, it's okay to to have all these different elements of what what makes what I like. Um, so the story of art, really great book to start with. I do have some others, but I thought I would keep it simple and actually show what I am using at the moment to um, to to learn myself. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more um, of what I'm doing to basically educate myself. And as I said, I will um, do another video maybe next week about what I'm doing to just experience um, and experiment with art myself to just basically play. <laughs> At 51, that's uh, very encouraged and, and it's very rewarding to do. So thanks for watching and if you like my videos, make sure to leave me a comment, um, press the little like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you. Have a good day.